AI became one of the hottest topic right now, and everybody want to break into AI field, become a product manager or engineers. And however, there's a very little training out there for everyone to effectively break into AI product management. But today, we're going to demystify AI product management by head of AI from Save the Children International, Nicholas. He's going to dive into five different factors, tell you. What's the most important AI tools? How to become an AI product manager? What's the important AI courses people can start to join for free starting from today? Wait until the end of this video where we're going to share with you the generative AI use cases that everyone must master before they break into AI. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director of product and feature in Forbes. I've helped 100 people land the dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we cover tech trends and free product management training. Like and subscribe and check out new video every Tuesday. Hi, Nicholas. Welcome back to the channel again. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. And you? Awesome. Yeah, I'm doing very well. And this specific video, we're going to talk about you as the head of AI in Save the Children International from your real life experience, how to help others also become an AI product manager. And also, let me please allow me to do a brief introduction who is Nicholas. And actually, Nicholas is the head of uh, generative AI at Save the Children International, which operates in more than 100 different countries globally. And Nicholas itself is also a Brazilian who moved to UK with, with visa sponsorship um, from his new company, a very exciting global career. And actually in our last video right here, he uh, dived into specifically how he become the head of AI in the international company as a Brazilian citizen. And everyone should check it out right there with all different kind of career growth strategies. And in this video, we're gonna dive deeper regarding AI product management, lots of technical, terms and also lots of free courses recommendation and different kind of use cases people must master from the head of ai awesome so nicholas why don't we do this why don't you give people an overview regarding what is ai product management so in simple terms the ai product manager is someone that knows the pm tools the product management tools but is prepared as well for the new challenges that arise from working with ai so someone that doesn't want to use AI for everything, but someone that uh, tries to avoid AI as much as possible due to its complexity and uh, drive real impact and move real pointers. <laughs> this is awesome. I love your quote, use AI as much as possible, but avoid AI as much as possible when it's too complex. This is awesome. Let's dive deeper a little bit. So can you give us so some examples regarding how AI is used in product management today. Given all companies put the AI next to the name, like Notion AI, any kind of AI, and then they become the AI company and raising 10 times more market value because they add AI to the company. So tell us more, how actually AI is used in product management today? So uh, first of all, I see three levels of implementation of AI in a product. So the first one and simpler is to use AI to improve an existing feature. The second one is to create a whole new feature that wouldn't be pro possible without AI. And the third level is to build a whole new product that would be imaginable without AI. So the AI PMs really shine in the third level. For the first level or second, you maybe just need a new developer and off-the-shelf tools. So why don't we dive deeper regarding each level? Can you give us one example of each? Let's say the first one is you add existing product, improving existing features, you add AI. So give us one product that's in your mind right now. In the first level, uh, you can improve features like Gmail does, uh, detecting spam spam messages and filtering out for you. So it's a way to improve a functionality that already exists. You could have a, a set of rules that detect if uh, the email is spam or not, but you can use AI and make it better. So mm -hmm. it's easy to implement. The risks are very low, uh, the effort is low, and, but it's easy for the competition to catch up. Yeah. In the second layer, you can think of, uh, for instance, uh, 
AI generated uh, content for marketing, something that is happening right now. Mm -hmm. So tools, uh, commercial tools are already uh, launching some features that help you create new content uh, out of a uh, uh, description that you, you provide. Awesome, such and as the, like email marketing tools, or social media posts, some of the social media posts were created by AI and some of my social media posts were created by AI, like LinkedIn posts, different things. Hey guys, if you can guess which one is created by AI, comment in the description of my social media post. Uh, I love to see if you can tell or not. Yes, those are new features for email marketing tools. Uh, what about the third one? On in the third level, on the third level, you can think of uh, products that are co could be completely new. For instance, self-driving cars without uh, a driver's seat. So you just go there, sit and go to where whatever you want. It's not an, a, car, a, a car that was adapted using AI, but uh, it's a new feature that you can, a new, a whole new product that allows, that is selling you a new value. What would be this new value in these cases that you are able to sleep while you travel. This is, could be an example. This is perfect. Yeah, and that's... you said true AI PM are mainly in need for the third type, not the first two. Am I right? Uh, yes. Yes. Because in the third type, you need to, the risks are, are much higher effort is higher so an AI PM must uh, be able to understand how the data strategy the AI strategy and the product strategy align to create a sustainable advantage for the company mm -hmm. I think this is where the AI PM truly shines so you need to be sure that you're building something that uh, as you get more data your product gets better and as your product get, gets better you get more customers and you get more data and with better quality so you need to build these wheels these uh snowball effects in the product yeah we call those the flow like flywheels and turn into snowball effect and you get more users more data better uh, but data to train the models so send more users and like it's, it's a loop and the wheels just get bigger and bigger. Thank you for explaining this and uh, make it much simple for people to understand. So now tell me to understand now we know three types of different kind of AI being used in product management. What are the top three skills to master for AI product managers given lots of people want to break into AI PM? So what do you think the top three skills that's necessary? Okay, so the top three skills. Uh, first of all, and uh, we almost never heard here about that. This is AI UX. It's very important to understand how your final user is going to use AI, what level of explainability is necessary for them to trigger the right decisions so that your user uh, is able to receive more value, to draw more value from, from your product or your feature. Mm -hmm. So the AI UX is extremely important. I had a work together with the International Partnership on AI that was related with understanding how na uh, people that don't have any AI literacy deal with AI models. So is this safe for them to, to receive the predictions di directly? It depends a lot uh, on what their role is, what are the tools they have at, at their disposal in the moment they are using your product and the legal factors as well. For instance, if you send a detection of a disease in an exam mm -hmm. to a technician, legally they, they can't do, do anything too much elaborated. So maybe it's not necessary for them this, this product, this solution. So first skill is to get more in touch with AI UX and within that you see the, the concept of explainability. That's very important. Yeah. Second, know when it's better to use off the shelf, so AI solutions, build customized AI solution in-house or hire a company or even wait for a big tech to launch it. So I surfed the first uh, AI machine learning wave, which was the AI for images. And I fell a lot in the trap of uh, developing things in-house and then six months later, a uh, big tech delivers the same feature mm -hmm. and then two more months their solution is better than ours and we had to migrate for theirs so mm -hmm. a key rule a good rule of thumb uh, in this matter is the the functionality is something that's general that can be applicable for a lot of companies regardless of their domain 
probably a big tech will launch the solution or if you build the solution they will buy your company that's that's a, a, a good strategy as well if you want but if you have something that's very specific for instance uh, in the case save the children international Mm -hmm. works uh, specifically with children uh, and uh, solutions that are specific for this public in specific locations are, are solutions that probably a big tech will never launch. So it's worth to, to build in house or, or try to, to hire a solution if they it's ready already. A third uh, top skill for an AI PM is you don't should spend too much time learning algorithms. I think it's more mm -hmm. important for you to learn and uh, what are the, the tools you have at our disposal and how the pricing uh, works and how it gets, it increases over time. So yeah, can you uh, elaborate because... on that? Isn't two and three kind of similar? Number two is more thinking about what kind of, ex what kind of tools you think what might be kept, uh, caught up by your competition, by big tech, so it will be replaced soon. And now third one is understanding the features and also calculate the pricing. Tell, tell us more. Okay, uh, so the third one is the skill of uh, understanding uh, when is the way to complicate things more or less uh, based on what tools you have at your disposal and how is the pricing going to to follow that for instance uh, we had a a product that uh, the cost per month with ai models was 200 dollars and then after understanding better the peak hours of the product we found out that um, that the peak hours are very narrow and we migrated to a solution that was able to scale down the models and then uh, we reduced 80% the costs just nice. with one simple dec decision and I think this is a, a critical skill for an AI PM. I see, so basically making a business decision for the type of AI product and AI tools you will be using and also leveraging the user data usage um, so that you can make the best technical decision knowing which one to choose, but driven by business insight. Am I right? Yes. Yes. That was, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, okay, great. Awesome. Now, let me ask you this question. You know, lots of people always ask, hey, Nancy, do you have any recommended AI courses? There's so many different kinds. Some are free, some are expensive, you know, so tell us. So what's your answer to this? There's so many free AI courses also, thousand dollars AI courses. So which one do you recommend? For AI, uh, I would recommend start learning what the cloud, uh, the clouds have for you. So Google Cloud, AWS, Azure, mm -hmm. uh, they all have a lot of courses on how to use their off-the-shelf solutions. Yeah. And, and when you start learning that, then you can deepen as you need it, depending on your product. So for AI in general, this is a good start. To, and uh, also try to, to be in a community such as the PMA and that we can, you can exchange experience with people that are actually using AI in practice. So I think it's more important to to get high high level, high quality information than doing general courses for AI, which is a already an old topic. So I consider it's very old right now. Uh, generative AI specifically, there are a lot of levels of implementation. I have mapped a five level framework to understand this craziness of the generative AI landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope soon Nancy and I We'll launch a course on that to help you. But uh, uh, so I mapped out these five levels uh, and found out that uh, most of the hype around generative AI is on the fifth level, the last one where you have the AI systems detecting, creating, coming up with complex plans and uh, checking this plan, prioritizing this plan and then following it to achieve a larger goal. So this would be the, the state of the art in the implementation of generative AI. And the most simpler one is just simple prompting. You write, 
your question get yeah. the answer back. But in the second level, just with meta prompting, you can get a lot of good results. Uh, for instance, I, I, I don't write my prompts anymore. So I ask a AI, a generative AI to, to read some articles on the internet on how to write great prompts and then write a prompt for me for summarizing XYZ for doing X. And then it comes up with a big text one, uh, one paragraph and then I feed this. So you can do a lot of these things which I'm calling meta prompting. I mm -hmm. don't know uh, if people are, are all settled on this term, <laughs> but you can do a lot of things just with that. I think 90% of the problems we have right now that people are looking into Gen AI, you will solve with the first and second levels. What you actually need to learn right now is how to make prompts, because regardless of the level, there are prompts involved. Uh, for instance, in the, the most complex level, you have prompts for for designing your agents so that they can think about their question, they can raise questions, but in the end of the day, everything is prompting. Mm -hmm. And the first thing uh, you need to learn is that. And a good course I found out is the deeplearning.ai. So the team from Andrew and G, they have this course that's just one hour. It's the best course I've done. I have done a lot of them that go very, very deep on reinforced learning, human feedback, fine tuning, blah, 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 blah. but uh, you don't need to overcomplicate. Start with prompt, meta prompting, and then uh, if you need more help, ask me or ask Nancy, <laughs> and then uh, or ask, ask an expert. But you probably don't need to get to this deeper level so soon. And knowing that, you'll be able to understand, well, this company is tackling level one or two, this, or their solution is the, just a, a set of prompts, a uh, beautiful plot prompts, so maybe it's better to do in-house. Mm -hmm. But this other company is, is now with a solution that is very, very smart, that comes up with plan, and then it's a much more sophisticated and high-risk application, so maybe in that case it's very useful to hire this company. Right now, most of companies are just in the first and second level of selling overpriced prompts. So learn prompts. You are good to go right now. You need more complex stuff. Follow me on Medium, follow Nancy, and, and we'll get there together. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I like the several highlight you have. Hey guys, um, there's a like one hour free prompting classes uh, by Deep Learning AI, and we're gonna put all the recommended classes in the description of this video. They're all free and including all the AI tools by different AWS Cloud, Google Cloud is all there. You can start learning right away. And regarding five layers of Gen AI, and Nicholas and I are actually planning to create another course. If you're interested, feel free to join our waitlist. Once available, you'll be the first one to um, uh, get to know. And also check out different media articles, start learning for free right now. So that that's where you start to get a big grasp of AI. And of course, find different communities, such as PMA communities, any community out there, learn from someone who already start having experience, maybe from engineers or product manager, anybody who start using AI, that's actually the best way, most practical way for you to start learning starting from today. Awesome. So Nicholas, tell us more regarding different kind of Gen AI use cases we should pursue right now. Or well, maybe choose not to pursue okay. some bad use cases you can tell us. So first of all, uh, something that's important for people to understand that uh, no one's telling clearly is that uh, large language models are just machines that you feed text and output text. I know you know that already, but do you truly grasp what this means? This means that everything a large language model is spinning out is a hallucination. Everything is a hallucination. Mm. It's not like it has critical thinking and it's smart and US thing and it will answers correctly 40% of the time and 60% of the time it's hallucinating. No, 100% of the time it's hallucinating. But mm. that doesn't mean it's useless. So how do you uh, overcome this problem? You need to, to make sure you fit the right context uh, so that it uh, answers a, a more trustworthy answer. And uh, you can be, think of getting the answers and then double checking uh, with generative AI as well, these answers. 
for instance, one use case that was very interesting that I found out. Uh, so detecting new markets. Okay, you can use generative AI to come up with ideas, but understand that these ideas may make no sense. Mm -hmm. And then you ask generative the generative AI to raise questions about these ideas that invalidate the, the, these ideas. And uh, what are the hypotheses behind these ideas? So I ask a generative AI, come with ideas, then what's the hypothesis uh, after this uh, behind this idea? And what questions should be asked to validate, to accept or disregard this idea? And then get the uh, scratch, uh, scrape the internet with Gen AI as well to validate the, to get the answers to these questions. And when you have the answers, you feed all of that again in a bigger prompt and ask, provided this, find these initial ideas, this hypothesis and these answers, uh, is it a good strategy or not? And then you, you get everything is drills down to more elaborate prompts and cascading these prompts and uh, putting the right context. And then you improve your chances of success. And, and a, a key thought I came in touch with recently is that uh, the AI cannot guarantee that uh, an answer is correct or that you don't have risks, but it can help you to find risks if there are. So they can't guarantee there are no risks, but if there are risks, they can be used to detect these risks. For example, uh, I have a product that uh, detects cancer uh, nodules, cancerous nodules in medical exams images. Mm -hmm. uh, I can ask the AI, uh, is there any risk if I this to I send it to to a doctor? It may come up with ideas of risks that may happen. And that could be really useful. Ah, oh, if you send uh, this to a doctor and the doctor there's this brain bias or something like that, this doctor can lead can lead the doctor to error. What you cannot do is to make it guarantee that there are no risks. So you ask them, uh, is this solution 100% safe? It may answer yes or no, but uh, doesn't matter because. There may be risk that the AI is not seeing. To understand what, what I... I see, I see. So that's how you ask AI. It's... You have some ideas, then you ask AI what potential risk could be involved in your certain ideas so that you have a deeper understanding of the outcome and make your own decision after you understand end to a bigger picture, am I right? Yeah. So it's like uh, instead the AI is good for finding uh, black dots in a white page Mm -hmm. But maybe it's not good to guarantee that a whole page is white. So it's something like that, you know? Gotcha. So awesome. it, it's a, a little bit crazy, I know. But uh, you start getting a feeling of that using AI and uh, improving on your prompting techniques, going on the mm -hmm. courses we mentioned as well. The, the original question was, uh, what are use cases we should pursue or not? So, yeah, what other use cases uh, we should pursue? Yeah, so uh, you should pursue cases that uh, if you get very bad results, if you use uh, out of the box solution, for instance, uh, one example would be I'm, I'm Nicholas and I want to learn about uh, what would be a good, uh, a good next step on my career. Mm -hmm. If I go to ChatGPT, and ask that what would be the next, the best next move in my career. That the answer will be very generic, useless. Yeah. But uh, so if you get bad results, and then you elaborate a little bit more your prompt, and you will start getting much better results with few effort. Like I fit in my resume, I fit in uh, my goals, I fit in what I like to do, what I don't like. I use the ChatGPT add-ons to allow it to scrape internet and do a market research on that. So when when you start to perceive that as you feed more information and make your prompt more elaborate, your result becomes much better because it's more aligned with the specific uh, situation. This is a great candidate for an AI product uh, solution. Gotcha. Actually, we did something similar. 
Uh, I have a separate course inside the inner circle and it is free for uh, many people. Feel free to go to the website right here to check out our inner circle where uh, we taught a one hour course regarding, hey, how would you use ChatGPT to write a perfect personalized cover letter and which is based on feeding into existing template of my cover letter and my resume, different kind of company. You, you actually tailor to the company and to my background, to my existing style of writing, and then you have a perfect example. Yeah, just like what you described about making very specific teaching um, the AI. Nicholas, you told us different examples of use cases idea. Let's talk about the use cases we shouldn't pursue. We shouldn't pursue uh, cases that look so obvious, that, uh, big, that are general and that are useful in many different domains. For instance, uh, an assistant that helps you schedule things. Mm. This is something that is useful regardless if you're a lawyer or if you are a salesperson or anything. So probably a big tech or Salesforce or some company that already work on space, we just get their already existing solution, add some uh, AI, some more AI sauce, <laughs> and then come up with a much better solution. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't pursue, pursue things that look that look like a next step for uh, what a big company would already do. So what's important as well is to think if you are pursuing a real a real business case or you are just surfing the Gen AI wave. As a product manager that needs to hire or at save the children. If this organization needs to hire a solution, it's very important that the solution is trustworthy, that the company is not going to fail six months from now. So we'll be looking a lot if the company already has a history in, in this field, for instance, health tech, or is already doing something and is using AI just to get to the next level. It's much different than a company that uh, period two months ago and it's just surfing the generative AI. A uh, lot of startups trying to do that, by the way. I'm glad you pointed out that your company has been around for 100 years, um, trying to really use AI to create the next generation of product instead of some startup just start a new company. Let's do something about generative AI, which lots of companies trying to do this. So that's why people need to be cautious regarding the type of company you want to join and also the type of company you want to become as well. Awesome. So thank you so much for sharing all the tips and advice today, Nicholas. And for everybody, uh, make sure to check out our last video Nicholas filmed and regarding how he teach uh, us regarding his career path, become a uh, head of AI in Save the Children International. And make sure to go to the waitlist regarding our upcoming AI for product management courses. And uh, we'll be the first person who know once we make it available and make sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel and keep tuned regarding our future AI product management training for free. Nicholas, thank you for joining us so much. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee from PM Accelerator.io. I'll see you in my next video right here.